through. Let's fill it up. Did y'all know that your belly is your first brain and that it regulates all organs to effectively work? And your organs are connected to your chakra points so that if your belly isn't healed, then your body and your chakra points will not be operating the way they're supposed to. Um, I spent 20 years in the Christian church. I spent 20 years studying the Helios Biblo Sun Book papers written by children of the sun. Uh, that would be descendants of the Essenes or the Essenes themselves. I have to speak to you Christians that are dead going to every synagogue of Satan paying your Federal Reserve notes, which are not money. James Traficant speech 1935. I have to speak to you. This is my last bid to deliver your unconscious mind, your sleep mind, so that you can have something for your economy instead of being economic debt slaves. Listen to all you Christians. It is impossible to worship a God that you do not know. If you look and see in your Helios Biblo Sunbook text, them taking out 12 full years of Yehoshua ben Yusuf, who is the great great grandson of Ruth the Moabitess, whose nationality is Asiatic Berber or Moabite. If you do not know this God whom you call Jesus, it is impossible for you to lift your hands in praise to him or her or the spirit that exists in the being or the conscious mind or the character of you cannot worship something you do not know so what that means is the euphoric feeling that you feel when you say the name Jesus also means justice a cold word let me explain to you the scientific phenomena of why your body has physiological changes when you speak the name Jesus. The word J, it has jewels, J-O-U-L-E-S. It's a form or a matter of energy. And every single letter in the name Jesus has a energetic feel to it. If you look in um, a Wiktionary and you type each letter in by itself, it will show you the energy of each particular character or letter. So when your conscious mind says, Jesus, you are actually invoking an energy field in your consciousness. That's why, yeah, that's what I'm talking about. You can feel what some call the anointing. That's number one. I'm teaching you what happens in your churches because for 15 years, you know what I did? I let people lay hands on me. I walked in them churches. I cried at altars. I, I what they would call, dance in the Holy Spirit. Yeah, I listened to the worship music and the organs and I let the specific notes touch my energy grid so that I could feel the impact of the energy of the music in my body. This is scientifically what's happening to you. When your eardrum hears the music and you're in a space of worship, you're actually in the space of your conscious mind, which is able to receive energy. So when you hear the organ or you hear the drum or you hear anything like that, because the, vibra the vibrational frequency of all the other members is in the form of consciousness, the, the impact or the measure of energy on your being is that much more. So, how do the pastors kill you? How do they um, siphon your energy out your body? You see that palm? In that palm, they teach you. It absorbs things and it also tells you things. When you lay your hand on the pineal gland of an individual and you're trained in the art of extraction energy, what the priests, the prophet, and the kings, the unholy ones do, is they draw your energy out of your body. You think you got touched by God. What? 
The reason why I'm so passionate is because I dare you lie to me and me not after finding out the truth. The same, um, the same volume with which you lied to me, I'm going to exponentially increase that volume when I'm speaking truth to you. So, if you let someone lay hands on you, that priest and that prophet and that king has just, through the art of scientific extraction of energy, pulled your energy out of your body. And then you go weak and you hit the ground. And you just got slain in the spirit. You just got touched by God. You just got an anointing. <laughs> yeah, right. All right, Mr. Christian. Now, everybody wants to debate, but scientifically, through factual experimentation or proof, I can prove to you the truth. So if I can prove it to you and you do not um, change your mind, change your consciousness about um, how you perceive the being and the uh, religious dogma of the Christian church, then you deserve to be dead. You deserve to be a slave. You deserve to be a subject to Rome. You deserve it. Okay. What else? The science. Come on, Mama Gaia. I'm drawing from the core of the earth, which is hotter than the sun. They always want to tell you to look at the stars, but they never tell you to draw from the core of the earth. Now, my constitution, by way of my astrological sign being a Capricorn, I'm an earth element. So all the earth energy touch me. I feel them all, baby. Now, I'm not able to see like people that have this sight, but I can feel everything. When I walk past people, I can feel their heart chakras. When people are dealing with stuff, I can feel their emotions. I'm empath. Uh, preach, uh, appreciate you, Gregory Trice. Um, conscious energy. Yes, Mika. Very much so. Um, uh, that would be... Um, I used to have conversations with what we call God, but it was my higher self. I said, how come I have to dialogue? How come I have to check in with you? And we're having a... Um, um, a back and forth conversation. How do I become one with my conscious mind? And it, it, it is a trained art. You have to practice knowing yourself for so long that uh, both beings become one and now you're operating in the fullness of your higher self. Now listen, the dichotomy is this, and this is backwards. We have to clear up our concepts. No opposing thought can exist in the same space at one time. It is, an, it is a scientific impossibility for two opposing energies to exist in the same space. So when we say we have a higher and a lower self, that is an incorrect concept. We're divided. We are one self. Are we listening? Are we, are we hearing the concepts being cleared up? You cannot be a higher self and a lower self at the same time. You have to be one or the other. And there is a way. And, and um, Yehoshua ben Yusuf did it and was teaching because for the 12 years of his life that they took out of the Helios Biblo Sunbook papers, those 12 years that were hidden from you were all the sciences and the arts of the Essenes concerning how to uh, connect with the energies and keep the body healed and perform pati particular miracles. Those miracles had to do with energy. It was like raising Lazarus from the dead was, it's, it's metaphorical. And it's, um, and it's real. You can lay hands on somebody who's dead and, and the power of your energy can jumpstart their heart. Uh, let's see. Uh, science. Science. What else goes on in this church that you guys go and worship at? The God that we do not know. Um, when you're speaking of the Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit in Hebrew is Ruach. Ruach is a feminine noun. It's a metaphor, bro. Mika Kashun. Yes, I do know that. But there are documented evidence there, there was an actual living being named Yehoshua ben Yusuf who walked the earth. And that particular being was related to us. And that being was crucified by the service corporation of Rome. Uh, no Christian that professes to worship or know Christianity has ever read the Constantinian Creed. Yep, I, I do know I knew the bull. Yes, I do. 
but I have to I have to clear up the concepts. Yehoshua ben Yusuf did exist. And I do pay homage to that man for the sacrifice that he made. And he did raise himself from the dead by way of his art form. He already saw his spirit leaving his body and he knew how to return it unto his body if he wanted to. There has been thousands and thousands of eyewitnesses uh, that documented the writings. Um, Josephus Flavius was a historian that wrote during the time Yehoshua ben Yusuf did his thing. Um, the scientists, uh, they want you to be connected from the feminine power of the Holy Spirit. Now, I encountered this power or this being when I was 17 at a, a, what they call a revival. Um, it come over my body and I didn't know what it was, so I rejected it and it left. But then a second time it come over and I allowed it to do in my body what it wanted to. And what it did is it cleansed my chakras. That's what it did so that I can reconnect with the energy. So over time, as I come into relationship, listen, rock is a feminine person, place or thing. Now, that is the Holy Spirit. When you're in the Christian church and they're trying to teach you God, the father, God, the son, God, the Holy Spirit. He, he, he. Eh, wrong answer. Where my mama at, nigga? Woo, come on, baby. Um, I've spent enough years studying to know what I'm talking about. So I do appreciate your contributions concerning these things, but I am well aware of all things concerning the truth of these religious people that bind our people's minds up. Uh, what else? Oh, okay. So, now you know that, um, oh, El Shaddai, the mini-breasted one. So, how could the Holy Spirit be, or the spirit of purity be, he, if El Shaddai is the mini-breasted one? Oh, we do have breasts too, men. It don't produce milk. But it does inform you that you may have been something at one time. <laughs> um... Uh, what else? So, let's clear up the concepts. Let's do it the right way. The churches are supposed to be paying you. They're supposed to be giving to you, the people. Rome is gone, baby. And anybody that's holding on to their security of Federal Reserve notes and all of that, it's over. Uh, I thank you, Matriarch. And I honor your study and your passion and the way that you go in about the truths that's being revealed to you. Noble Frank El Ali, good to see you. Um, now, men who are dealing with women who, when you come into contact with them, it is an automatic opposition. You're dealing with a spirit that does not um, understand, it doesn't understand how a man can come in tune with his feminine energy more so than the feminine herself. And it is uh, um, to them an offense that you um, know the feminine energy uh, more so. And sometimes they will attack that. So uh, 100, yeah, that trickology, yeah, yeah. And then uh, we gotta turn around and teach that 720 teachology. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> Monto Proprio. <laughs> That's what I'm talking about, girl. Look, let me tell you how I figured that out. I watched Coneheads when I was a little boy. And then I, and then I came up, and I'm 30 years old, and then I watched the story of Yakub. And I seen the Coneheads in Yakub's story. Oh, buddy, thank you for confirmation that that really was true. Shoo. <laughs> Meet the Apple Gates. You ever seen that? Them crazy ass white people eating all of them Butterfingers? Um, uh, whatever uh, uh, designation a, a bloodline you want to call them they was eating those butterfingers turning into praying mantises in the cone heads too <laughs> uh, I could think of some more sciences concerning how they be uh, raping you in the churches uh, and as I meditate on that I will reveal all because I spent everything of myself in those churches and didn't get an equitable return i didn't so now my equitable return is telling everybody that goes to those churches the truth about what really happens 
This is why they tell you don't lay hands on people and you can't operate out of your gifts. I used to be, but I am prophetic. When I talk to people, I hear words of wisdom about them and I tell them and they're, they're all happy. And I'm happy too that I could be a vessel. But when I was in the churches trying to operate prophetically, oh, you got to be the deacon. You got to be the, you got to be uh, uh, appointed and all of this crazy shit. When I was just trying to operate, uh, excuse me for my language, um, Empress. Um, I was sharing what goes on in the Christian churches from a scientific standpoint. Um, you may feel a little bit uneasy because that is dear to your heart and it is to me. Now, I haven't lost sight of the anointing or the God whom I honor and respect known as Christ Jesus, but his real name is Yehoshua ben Yusuf. He's the great, great grandson of Ruth the Moabitess. He spent 12 years, uh, years with the Essenes and he learned the art of um, regulating his energies, um, balancing his chakras. And he was using that, teaching the people how to heal themselves. And that's what made the service corporation mad. And that's why Rome or the priest, actually the priest killed him. The dark priesthood killed him. Um, if you remember correctly the story, when Rome um, re refused to kill Jesus, Pontius Pilate washed his hands. And he said, I don't want no part of this. This is a good man, because his wife had a dream. Well, after that happened, um, the priest said, his blood be on our hands. So it was the high priest that killed him. Um, truths about what go on in the churches. Uh, when you're vibrating at a conscious mind and you say, for example, we want someone to be healed. A thought energy is the form that heals the person. If your mind comes into agreement with another mind, and the vibratory frequency is strong enough, that person will be healed. Well, if you think about a church who's vibrating the thought healing to a specific being or conscious mind, and that conscious mind wants to receive that healing, then the vibratory frequency, and it hits their body and they boom, they're healed. This is the way it works. I used to lay hands on people and heal them. As a child, before, I was, I was on my way to being an apostle. I had, um, went to school for uh, pastoral studies for three years. I, um, alleluia, Jesus, alleluia, Jesus, they are casting a spell upon themselves, giving power to the beast. Um, alleluia means 10,000 praises. Um, to uh, taqwa, that means to clap. To clap means to shoot darts at the enemy's ears. So when you're clapping, taqwa is a Hebrew word and you're splitting the ears of the um, negative frequencies, if you will. Um, so much training, so many years in the churches. Um, I'm not away from those things, but I understand what goes on and how they use it to persecute our people. So if we're going to worship, we should worship the way our tribes did in the beginning. They danced, they made music, they performed rituals that were um, to honor the earth, our bloodline, our heritage, our culture, our people group, in order to connect with the energy of the earth, Gaia, they worshiped Gaia. They worshiped Mother Nature. Even if it, came, even if it came out of Jesus, you worshiping Mother Nature in the beginning was the Word and the Word was God and the Word was with God? There is no thing without the word of God. All things came through him. Even if you did worship Mother Nature and it came through Yehoshua, the light body, you would still be honoring the father. You would still be honoring the mother because the mother and father are one being. So when I was dealing with the um, clearing up the concepts in my mind and I learned about my mother God, um, the Holy Spirit, um, I said to myself, if I worship the mother, then the father is worshipped, and vice versa. It just depends on what's going on in my life. Do I need the enforcement of the father? Or do I need the nurture of the mother? Do I need the power and enforcement of the mother? Or, and, and do I need the counsel of the father? It all happens in the um, holiest of holies, which is your conscious mind, your chambers. The holiest of holies is when the priest put on their, um, their ephod, and on their ephod, uh, Proto Johnny, Islam to you, Mu. Um, 
is when I say Islam, I self law and master is a spiritual practice. It has nothing to do with uh, Muslim. The spiritual practice is knowing yourself. Who are you? Where do you come from? What is your bloodline? What did your bloodline do in the earth that is of notoriety or um, of uh, 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 to be observed and looked at and to be honored? Um, who were you in previous lifetimes? Where, what bodies was your conscious mind in before it was set in this body to continue the work? Um, who will you be in the future? Uh, and you practice knowing yourself by meditation. I just, I just, I say, who are you? Who are you? Tell me who I am. Who am I? And it's revealed to me. Different, different bodies, different um, um, apparitions, where my conscious mind was, what uh, planes of existence it was on, what it was doing. And then, of course, my final mandate here on this earth before I go home again. That is Psalm 68, 5 and 6. A father to the fatherless, a defender of widows, is God in his holy habitation. Oh, you want another one? Romans 12, 1 and 2. I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable to God, which is a reasonable service. And do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind, that you may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. Oh, come on, baby. Yeah. Who gonna tell me about something? Now I ain't being haughty. I'm just saying, I suffered many years combing the truth so that people's minds can be delivered. What else? Give me another one. Give me another one. Uh, these three abide, faith, love, and hope. But the greatest of these is love. Give me another one. Come on, Holy Spirit. Out of his belly shall flow rivers of living water. Come on. And the leaves of the trees will be for the healing of the nations. Who are the leaves of the trees? You. Who are the trees? The 12 tribes of Israel. Oh, who's going to heal the nation? The leaves of the tree. You. How? Through your gifts. What gifts? Your sciences. Your words of wisdom. Your learning of energy, how to heal people. Um, give me another one. Oh, Isaiah 9, 6. And he shall be called a wonderful counselor. Come on, baby. Um, give me another one. Come on out my spirit. Um, yeah, baby. Yeah, baby. Preaching right now. You ain't gonna get this at the Bible bookstore, baby. Um, uh, Isaiah 26, 3 and 4. Thou will keep him in perfect peace, whose mind is stayed on thee, because he trusteth in thee. Trust in the Lord, Yah, for in him is everlasting strength. Woo, come on, baby. I'm pouring into the body right now. Uh-huh. Come on. Where is it at? Ooh, and I know those who say they are Jews. Yehudi. And are not. Ooh, come on, baby. Where are you? Where are you? Psalm 77, 6. And I commune with my heart, and my spirit make diligent search. <laughs> yeah. And the same way I have all of those scriptures in my being after observing them for so many years, I will begin to absorb the Holy Quran and I will be begin to absorb the Circle Seven more and more every day. And I will apply those principles. Yeah. What else? Um, oh. Okay, so you got three. The Torah, which is the wisdom of Ra. You got the, um, the Tanakh, which is the... Uh, oh, I got to get back on that. I got to get back on that because I know that. The Bible is the Helios Biblos. The Torah is the wisdom of Ra. And the um, Septuagint is one, but I can't remember that one right now. Um... Is there anything else for the people concerning um, the truth of the spirit? Anything else? Uh, mm, mm. Thank you for having church with me today. And... I appreciate you walking with me while I take care of this business in um, conveying the city back into our empire and gifting it to myself and the world. Tomorrow is my Earth Day. This will be one full solar return from the time I woke up last year. And you know what I did on my birthday? 
last year, I did a name declaration and a judicial notice, and I sent it to Trump, Antonio Guterres, and the governor of the state I was born in. Yep, sure did. And I notified the Mexican president of that when I um, emailed him today, or I, I sent the correspondence on his website. I also sent the correspondence to the Secretary of State. So they have the presentments, and right now, being CC'd, um, are the commissioners. Uh, you know that I'm safe, so long as I'm on here with you in some way, shape, or form, please continue to send healing energies of protection, because uh, about three weeks ago, I'm at, I'm, di I'm chilling with Mama Gaia, um, y'all know her, uh, as a particular being if she chooses to reveal herself, but there was pressure right behind my ear, on both sides of my head. And I didn't know what it was. I could, I could feel it. But I sat in her presence and she showed me different ways to heal the body um, through minerals and roots. And it went away because I was in the perfect peace and atmosphere. I don't know if they're parasites on our bodies because we'd be eating at GMOs or what. But definitely, um, it came back. And that was just uh, two days ago. I started feeling that pressure again. So that's why I ask y'all to send um, energies of healing my way. Um, thank you, Derek L. Swaby, for um, putting your hand to the plow. It's amazing to me how the mothers charge the um, males, yet not only one mother in the whole land right now is putting her hand to the actual work with me. One matriarch. The rest of the consuls are all males. So, you know. I ain't going to say we need some cheerleaders, but um, it is kind of weird how we got charged to do the work and we stood up and they still sitting down. Some of them, that is. To those who are putting their hands to the plow in whatever way, shape, or form, we love you and thank you for your service to uplift risen humanity. I am not fallen humanity anymore. Do not call me that. I uplift risen humanity. <laughs> Yeah. Peace and praise to you. Uh, be sure to call me if you want to get in trust. That is the only way that I will answer this phone. I am um, administrating in a state and I am trying to get nationals to come into trust and have a piece of this pot. Because, woo, baby, it tastes good. <laughs> this pie is tasting real good, baby. Yeah. <laughs> Talk to y'all soon. I'm about to get in the place of protection until um, tomorrow's meeting. Real soon.